This episode is brought to you by Ariston Specialties in Bloomfield, Connecticut, makers of amazing olive oils and other Greek delights. Check them out online at aristonspecialties.com. That's Ariston, A-R-I-S-T-O-N, specialties.com. Welcome to the all-new Food Schmooze Party Podcast. I'm here with the all-stars, and this time we're going to dive into some fish recipes. We, we thought we haven't done this in a little while, so let's, let's give it a try. We've got some good ones coming up, and some of them are just so easy you can't believe it. So um, I'm with uh, Carl Franklin, who lives in Quaker Hill, uh, Chris Prosperi in Simsbury, Mark Raymond in Old Weathersfield. Um, I'm Faith Middleton, and we're so glad to have you with us. This is the brand new podcast home of the Food Schmooze, our independent broadcast. Uh, so let's start with uh, Chris. What, what have you got for a fish recipe? All right. So I am getting ready for warmer weather because I don't know about you. It wasn't a bad winter here in New England, but for some reason it felt long. So I've been poaching fish and I don't know. It seemed like it was a technique that went away for a while. But like you said in the, in the opening, it's easy, easy, easy is poaching, right? So. The other night I did salmon. So I took a, you know, I had a little piece of, you know, probably around six ounces. And all I did was I took a little saute pan, you know, maybe a inch or two larger than the filet around, right? Yeah. And then I took it and I just took a little bit of butter and I smeared it on the bottom. <laughs> and then uh-huh. I threw in some shallots and then I put in, and I just used water, right? So I put in the water. I put in a couple of peppercorns, a bay leaf, a sprig of thyme. And then I put my, um, um, salmon fillet in there and then I just take a little piece of parchment paper you know I, I have it on at home on a roll and I just rip it off and put it on top and turn it on to like a just a medium low so it comes up nice and slow and then I like my salmon to have you know to be a little on the medium rare side so really when I start seeing the bubble start going and it starts simmering I turn it off and then I just let it sit so now I'm going to make a salad and I just let it sit it's on the stove it's still on the burner and the heat is off but it has that residual heat so it when you cook it like that it cooks so like slowly and softly when you get the salmon out of there it's almost like a silky texture and then i just take it i pull it out right and then what i also do is i throw a little bit of that poaching liquid down the drain right that stuff and then i put it back on the pan maybe there's like a quarter inch of it so just a teeny bit on the bottom and those shallots right i take the bay leaf out um and then i just swirl in some butter Carl's going to like that, oh, right? Yeah. To make a little yeah. bit of like a blanc kind of thing. And yeah. then I take my fish, I put it on top of some greens. I pour the, the buttery sauce on top. <laughs> and oh my gosh, some fresh lemon on the side. Yeah. Oh. And again, it could be on greens. It could be on spinach, arugula, whatever you have. And again, it's just bringing me into the warmer weather and that kind of eating. Yeah, yeah, so I'm I'm telling oh, yeah. you, poaching, that's going to be my technique. Fish technique for the summer is going to be poaching fish. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's it's um better than on the grill because it's hard to control on the gr- uh-huh. on the grill. I poach fish. That's all I do with my fish is poach. Yes. So except you're fancier than I am yeah. because I just <laughs> yeah. I just get some water on. You know, and and let it start to bubble, and I just throw my fish in there. Yeah, yeah, but I don't. I mean, it's not, it's not a lot of work. It's like one sprig of thyme, a yeah, bay leaf, no, and right. some chopped yep. up shallots. And heck, you could just cut the shallot in half and throw it in there just to give it some flavor. When how much does it? Do you fill it over the bro, over the piece just, of fish? Just uh, just over, just over the top, and then a piece of parchment on top. A little, you know, the part, wax paper, uh, not the wax paper, yeah, the parchment well, paper, the parchment on top. Hold the heat just, in, yeah, hold the heat in, and that's it. Like I said, uh, and it cooks so soft. I gotta do that. It's so yeah. like I said, especially right. with a light fish like salmon, it uh-huh. is literally like silk when you do it. So you're not uh-huh. going for a crispy skin on the no, salmon. No, no, I this is bo- this no, is skin to like bone that, everything. This is right. just the fillet, right? No, no skin. skin on it. Just the fillet of salmon and I'm telling you, you do it like that and you just squeeze the lemon on top as you're eating it, you know, as you go a little bit at a time and it's just the freshness of that. You know, oh my God. You're just reminding me fish, butter, lemon, salt, yeah, that's herbs. It. 
What more is there? It's that's all you need. So good. I I do that technique with chicken too. It's oh God, yeah. yes. yes. It's yeah, just easier than yeah. you know. It comes no out mess, velvety. right? You get one little the, pan, you put it in the dishwasher, you're done. I also want to uh-huh. be free before you go on. Uh, where you buy fish, right? This right. Pe- this is the right now. I'm going to say this is the number one question I get from people when I'm out and about, like shopping or like mm. just walking in the park or whatever. People always come up to me and ask me about you know food questions, and that is the biggest question I've been getting recently. And I, it's a tough one, right? I mean. It, down on the shore where uh, Faith and, and Carl live, it's probably very easy to find good fish. But once you get up out right into the hills of Connecticut, it's a little harder. So, you know, you got to work a little harder to find. Well, well, see, here's the thing. Like, you know this, that all, most all fish that you get in the store is flash frozen on the boat and it tries to stay frozen until mm-hmm. they put it out. Yeah. So the question is, do they have enough turnover of fishmonger? Mm-hmm. Do they have enough turnover so what I I do is I just get bold and I say, hey, I, I need to, that needs to pass the smell test. Yeah. You know, yeah. I, don't, I don't care about when yeah. you put it out this morning. I, I want a little piece that I can wave in front of my nose. Good for you. Yeah, no. Or if, yeah. There's, a, or if there's a fish market, those guys, like, I, and I'll throw out a name. I use Gulf Shrimp. That's what I use in the restaurant. They have a little retail store. It's mm-hmm. in yeah. Southington. And let me tell you, there I have been buying from them for almost 30 years now mm. and i have never once sent anything back mm. and that's big right yeah. to not like for 30 years not send one piece of fish back that's awesome right so that's yeah, awesome. find a good fish market make yeah. them your friend like in the old days where the butcher had to be your friend right right you went in yeah. you <laughs> talked about the kids like in where we grew up in queens <laughs> the butcher knew us all by name you know as we were tagging behind my mom Right? Would, would they give you a pickle or something oh, like that? Oh, yeah. They say, always yeah. would give us something like a slice, slice of, of cheese. Pieces, yeah, or a slice of pieces of right. pastrami or some corned beef that they had just done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But the fishmonger has to be your friend. All right. That's yeah. enough for me. Sorry. Okay. It's <laughs> a good one. Um, we're going to take a really fast break, and we're going to come back with some more fish recipes. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Food Schmooze at faithmiddleton.com. The all-stars are, are with me as always, and I just love it when I get to hang out with these folks. So I'm going to introduce Carl to do something next on fish, uh, but I, I just want to congratulate him because we did what we told you we were going oh, yeah. to do. We oh. had our pastrami dinner and uh, oh. carl, carl made this talk about a complicated recipe but so delicious and yeah. it was like a sous vide technique and then it was on the grill and oh my god it was just amazing we all got together uh, at carl's house it's the first time i've been together with you guys yeah, yeah. Oh, that's, in the right. Same room. that's right it was yeah. wonderful yeah it was yeah. incredible yeah yeah. And we met some new people. We're invited to and we met them and they were great. Yes. And yeah. Carl's wife Kelly and um mm-hmm. and Kelly gave me a loaf of uh rye bread that she had made. So I went Oh home my god, her bread a, was incredible. A platter of salmon. I don't know <laughs> where that came from, but <laughs> that's my mother. That yeah. was in the corner, it was really good. <laughs> yeah, oh, my mother brought that. <laughs> yeah, oh, I couldn't wonderful. walk away from the pastrami or the liver pate. I know. Yeah, but I know. the uh but Julie Fox McClure, who makes Fox Hill Kitchen's bread and bread mix, she came down. She's a good friend. She oh. came down. She cooked up a loaf of, of rye. Uh, we had a couple loaves in the fridge. So between that and then she made some, I don't know if you guys tried those little. Oh, the little rolls. Rolls that she yeah. made. Yeah, I oh. did. Oh, yeah. yeah. Those are yeah. great. And you That's got what some- I was using to eat the uh, pate. Right. Oh, I know. <gasps> that pate. Yeah. Ooh, Chicken okay. liver pate. How- it was, that was so, so good. Heaven. Good. Yeah. Who made that? That's Julie's con- yeah, uh, concoction. That was really she, good. She ba- it's basically so good because it's half liver and half butter. Oh, wow. Can that's why bu- it's so good <laughs> with some seasoning. Yep. That's all you need. Some brandy. Go to the hospital and lie down. It's like, right. <laughs> I know. It's yeah, got to take There was doses. no going to see your cardiologist on Monday. That's for sure. <laughs> and right. Mark, I um, guess you took some bagels home because you had some. Uh, oh, I've had them two days in a row now. Absolutely outrageous. Everything bagels with 
you know, there's no, there's no gluten, there's no sugar, mm. there's no, uh, but she uses yeast. It's so, incredible. Yeah. So the yeast actually eats the residual sugar in the almond flour, in the coconut flour, and, you know, gives it that yeast bread taste. It, 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 it is, it is real bread. Mm. It is really good. It's so delicious. I, I, I I'm craving it now. Yeah. Yeah. Can you buy the um, pate that she makes? No, I don't think so. But but the recipe is out there. Um, and and I'll share that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh. I've made it myself, and it's really, really? good. You do need a, a food processor, right? I'm never. Well, no, you make need it. a Vitamix or some oh, sort yeah. of yeah. a blender that can yep. really uh you know yep. pulverize yeah. that That's stuff. That's why I'm not gonna. Okay. So <laughs> Carl, all right, Carl, yeah. tell me, um, what 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 fish. A dish would you like to feature sure well um let's go portuguese i'm gonna okay. make cod yeah. cakes oh yeah oh, nice. fried cod I love cakes fish i cakes. like that fish yeah. cakes are so good and they're so easy and you know this is a keto recipe but you can easily unketofy it for your own purposes um you're basically going to take uh cod fillets that are cooked you need them cooked, right? You need lemon zest. You need chopped parsley. You need mayonnaise. You need an egg yolk. You need some celery salt, some crushed pork rinds. <laughs> and now here's where you can unketofy it. Like if you don't want to use pork rinds as the binder, you can use breadcrumbs. And if you want to add boiled potatoes that are cut up in there that are seasoned, maybe some dill, you can put that in there. I mean, basically, when I make fish cakes, I'm just looking for that texture that where yeah. where it's thick enough so it holds together uh, and it doesn't fall apart but it's not so thick that uh -huh. you know you can't move it you know it's just got to be that it's not dried out right yeah exactly yeah that sounds so good. that's what i do i okay. i basically have uh uh i i basically cook them in lard i pan fry them in lard over medium heat mm. And then mm. I make my own tartar sauce, which is, you've probably done tartar sauce a million mm. times, but mine is just, uh, you take uh, dill relish and capers and you squeeze all the water out. Like I, I put it in a paper towel or a cheesecloth or something. I just squeeze and squeeze and squeeze because, um, you know, we don't want liquid in there. And then add to mayonnaise and fresh dill, a little salt and pepper, and Ooh, there's yeah. your tartar sauce. So good. You know, you're reminding me that I adore fried capers. Oh, I love them. Oh, oh, my wow. God. They're so good. <laughs> Agreed. Okay. All right. Let's 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 get to Mark Raymond down. Just to, Mark, what, what kind of fish thing are you going to make? So, mine's going to start with good old-fashioned Argentine chimichurri. So oh, I'm gonna yeah. So, I'm going to have that batched up already, <laughs> which is pretty simple. It's parsley, olive oil, garlic, and salt, pepper, a little crushed red pepper. But it's all that good stuff, and I use that as my marinade. And I'm going to take some, uh, probably U12, yeah, U12, U20 shrimp. So, you know, the shrimp that you come like 20 to a pound. Mm -hmm. We're going to do a half a pound of those peeled and deveined. And then I'm going to chop up uh, some red pepper. I'm going to chop up some zucchini and and some button mushrooms, maybe the baby bella, portobello yeah. mushrooms. Hey. And I'm going to make some skewers with those together. Wow. And then I'm going to marinate them probably for about an hour and a half with chimichurri. And wow. A lot of people don't think to do fish with chimichurri, but nope. I'll tell you what. Yeah. With shrimp. <laughs> tell me what. It's <laughs> just so good. You know, I put I a little it. lemon squeeze that. over <sighs> it after, it's, as, after it starts to grill and you flip to one side. Yeah. And I squeeze a lemon over it so you get the... <laughs> The garlic, the parsley. The, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could smell it. You could almost yeah, smell it now, yeah. right? Yeah. I feel another party coming on. Oh, we're doing my house <laughs> hey, next time. we're just time. getting started here. <laughs> yeah. We're doing my house next time. Oh, the oven. Yeah. Outdoor grill it. Maybe okay. we'll invite some listeners in the next one, maybe. <laughs> yeah. There you sure. go. I don't know. All I right. didn't want to invite them to Mark's house on, on Mark's behalf, but. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all the listeners. Might have to check with the boss on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Um, Okay, that's good. So now, now mine is, is probably the simplest of the bunch because I just get, um, a fry pan and get some, uh, either some, you know, I go to the fish market sometimes if you can get peeled shrimp already. 
Mm. You know, I've sometimes done it with frozen shrimp. Um, sure. It's better to get them fresh, especially when the red shrimp come in from Stonington. Oh, yeah. Yes. But anyway, just some shrimp. And if you if they're not cooked, you just fry them up in a pan with uh, some olive oil. And then in a pot, I make couscous and I dice up some Kalamata olives mm-hmm. and I dice up some cherry tomatoes and uh, that all goes together. You know, the shrimp is laid out and then, I mean, the uh, couscous is laid out and then you put the shrimp on top of it and with the cherry tomatoes that are mm. nice and squishy at this point mm. yeah. and, and feta cheese. And oh, so yeah. it's a kind of Greek, it's a Greek fish dish Dang. that uh, I, love I like. I love all those flavors. And, yeah. you know, you could probably find that recipe in about 800 places online. <laughs> but I I just made it up one day because I like every single one of those flavors. Yeah. And, uh, that and is so delish. I keep, you know, I, I you know, I've had, um, I even had one time, um, it uh, d- doesn't matter, but a famous food person came for lunch and I thought, oh my huh. God, what am I going to do? <laughs> And I thought, I'm going to make that couscous and shrimp dish. And I remember him saying, this is perfect. <laughs> you know, nah, I was well, so relieved. Oh, my God. Mm, um, okay. Yummy. I'm Faith Middleton. You are at faithmiddleton.com. This is where you can find our brand new Food Schmooze Party podcast, an independent broadcast. And um, we're thrilled to be with you. And we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah. Waiting for the summer to come.